I stand at the top of my stairs, sock toes curling into the carpet as one hand squeezes the door handle, and the other hovers over the light switch, trying to decide if it's safe to turn the lights out. It's nearly seven at night. I have about an hour before sundown but it's just dim enough in the stairwell to make me doubt if that really matters. I stare down at the welcome mat, and, though I see nothing, I know the thing that lives at the bottom of my stairs is watching me too. I know its gauzy white eyes never blink, and that its teeth thin and far too long for its mouth, extending far past its leathery lips, cannot smile, but I feel as if it's grinning at me. I know its gaunt, lanky limbs are curled and crouched around its small body, waiting to lunge the second the light is out. I know it isn't real. If it was real, I'd be able to see it. But even as I remind myself of this, <laughs> I leave the light on. You see, I made him up, the creature that lives at the bottom of my stairs. I've always had an active imagination. Many children create monsters or imaginary friends with rules. A man who runs beside the car, but can only run in the shadow of a vehicle. A ghost who befriends you but is invisible to anyone older than you. A monster who waits at the bottom of your stairs, but can't move until the lights are out. I'm not sure why I never stopped doing this. <laughs> I'm approaching my mid-twenties, and most children stop around ten. Or at least they stop talking about it. I try to keep my concerns to myself, though. I've had to explain myself a time or two as to why I have to be the one who closes the door. I'm the only one who knows what he's doing, because I created him. The worst part is, I know that he only exists because I think he does. There have been weeks or months where I can go up the stairs to my apartment and not feel his eyes on my back, his claw-like fingers waiting to rip into me. All it takes is a stray thought, though, and he's here again. There have been times where I was too slow to close my door after I turned the light out. Nothing happens right away, though I know He's in my apartment with me. There's always a chill in my spine and a cold stone in my stomach when he gets past my door. But it's not like he drags me down the stairs or anything. For some reason, though I know he's capable of killing me, he doesn't. Even when I succeed, sometimes there's this dull thudding noise that starts at 2 a.m and continues until sunrise. Like he's slamming his dry, callous, two big hands against the door, demanding I open it and let him in. This has been the hardest part about accepting he's not real, because I've had guests ask me about the noise. I never know what to tell them. Though, on the nights he gets in, I can feel him watching me from the doorway to my room, which unfortunately shares a wall with that stairwell. He sits in the same spot all night, breath wheezing out his squished, bat-like nose, body twitching and contorting as he runs his clawed fingers over his face in anticipation. Though I've not claimed to have actually seen him, I will say I feel as if a trick of the light or a stray shadow have sometimes looked 
as if they were trying to reveal him to me. My biggest worry is I think he's getting closer with each time I fail. He started right outside my doorway, but he was a mere three feet from me the last time. I can't really tell because he isn't real and because I can't see him, but I think he's getting more and more worked up. I don't know what he's so excited about, but I can guess it will happen when he has made his way to sit at the foot of my bed. I think he's getting faster. I've been failing more often than not to keep him out. It won't be long now before he reaches his goal, whatever that goal is. Maybe it's to torment me and feed off my fear of what he'll do next. If that's his goal, he's succeeding. It's killing me. I can't sleep knowing he's there. I know he's never attacked me in the past, but I'm always scared that tonight will be the night he decides that enough is enough and goes for it. My lack of sleep is hurting my job. My paranoia is ruining my relationships. All I do is sit at home and hide away from the creature I don't know how to stop. And I'm sick of it. So, tonight, I'm not going to hide. Tonight, I'm leaving the door to the stairwell open when I turn off the light. I'm turning off all the lights in my shitty apartment, and I'm going to sit on my bed in the dark. Tonight, when his twisted body lunges and lurches its way into my room, I'm not going to pretend I don't see him. I'm not going to pretend that just because I made him up, that means he's not real. I'm going to look him in those disgusting, cloudy eyes and accept my fate. I'm tired of waiting. She sat, glaring into the mirror at the beastly reflection that evokes her husband's criticisms. The rolls of fat sitting atop her ribcage, protruding over her belt loop, had caused many arguments over her eating habits. Her hair was slowly balding, becoming less of the luxurious mane she was praised for in her twenties. Wrinkles overwhelmed her face, declining its years well beyond her own. She had become a shell of her former self, and her husband was no longer interested in her. She herself felt her appearance had become a burden, once taking so much pride in her maintenance, it's slowly fading once the depression set in. She no longer took pleasure in keeping up what her husband so proudly worshipped, arrogantly showing her off like the proud owner of a new Ferrari. Exercising seemed too tedious, and plastic surgery was too expensive. There weren't too many options available. She was about to give up, cash in her ticket to those pearly gates in the sky when the discovery of her husband's long-term infidelity finally pushed her over the edge. She wanted revenge, wanted to show him that she was still that vibrant, gorgeous woman he fell in love with. Wanted to show him that, underneath the mask of flab and matted hair, like the beautiful being she used to be. The internet offered no solutions of a quick fix. Just a bunch of empty lies and deceptive gimmicks. Not even the deepest part of the world wide web could give any alleviation to her desperation. As she inched the cursor towards the red X in the corner, a pop-up revealed itself on the screen. Do you want back the body you had in your twenties? 
Missing the fire and passion in your marriage? Click here for the solution that will change your life. It was too good to be true. Had the man that claimed their creation finally decided to alleviate her misery, she spared no second in clicking the suspicious message. An order box appeared, listing the price of the unnamed Holy Grail she'd been looking for. $120.95. How could something that promised so much be so cheap? She quickly entered her credit information, then clicked Submit. Heaving a sigh of relief, she sat down. She laid down her laptop and leaned back against the couch. Soon, all of the sarcastic remarks and dirty looks would disappear. After waiting for weeks, the quick fix she'd been waiting for finally arrived. She grabbed the box, sprinted to the basement, trying to conceal it from her husband's wandering eyes. Shaking hands gripped the sides of the box, ripping it open, unable to contain the excitement that brewed inside of her. What was inside the box conjured more questions than answers. Sitting inside were plastic, life-sized doll parts. She was flabbergasted. Was this a joke? Had she been duped out of her money? As she was just beginning to feel the blow of vulnerability, she noticed a note underneath one of the arms. Separate from the old, replace with the new. It was clear what she had to do. She locked the basement door and grabbed the electric saw. She heaved a sigh of anticipation for the pain she was sure to endure. Reluctantly resting her arm upon the table, the blade of the saw hovering above her shoulder, she tightly shut her eyes, fruitlessly preparing herself before cutting into her flesh. She screamed in horror as the muscle was torn to shreds, blood splattering across her face and clothing the snapping of bone almost making her nauseous. The disorienting deed left her with a mouth full of gurgling blood and less energy than crashing from a sugar high. The pain was worse than childbirth, but she couldn't quit. She'd come too far. Stumbling her way to the cabinets, she clumsily searched for a needle and thread. Staggering to a chair nearby, she grabbed the right arm from the box, balancing it under the remains of her shoulder. She weaved in the needle, connecting her tattered flesh to the plastic until it was perfectly fused to her body. Somehow, she was able to gain complete control over its mobility, clenching and reopening her fist with ease. It was beautiful, slim and smooth, a small reminder of her youth. Any doubt she had in continuing drifted away. She craved more. She began cutting off more parts, left arm, right leg, left leg, replacing it all with the new synthetic ones. The scream she produced had finally reached her husband's ears. He raced to the basement door, pounding on it like a savage beast trying to reach its prey. She ignored him. The torso was tricky. It was to be stitched from the front and wrapped around her existing frame. She started up the saw once more, slicing away bits of flesh and muscle from her sagging build. Her husband yelling for her to stop her heinous act, persistently trying to break down the door. There was only one thing left to replace. The face. She sluggishly plugged the mask from the box and held it up to her face, 
Hmm. It would do nicely. The saw was much too powerful for such a delicate removal. A knife would be its replacement. She dug a knife into her skin, ripping it away from the muscle. Her shrieks intertwined with her husband's pleas. She peeled the slivers of leftover skin off and began stitching the mask onto her exposed tissue. Her eyes beamed brightly from the sight of her new physique. She looked as though she had returned to her old self. The money was well worth the result. Her husband, eventually successful in barging through the door, froze from the sight of the monstrosity that stood in front of him. Blood trickled from the mask and stitch wounds, parts connected in a haunting manner, twisted and contorted in opposite directions. She limbered closer to her estranged husband, keeping her eyes fixed upon his horrified expression. Do you love me now? Her face crackled as she began to smile, taking several deep breaths before falling to the cold, hard ground. Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you. <laughs>